Hello and welcome back to another episode on Four Foot Friday. And today we are going to be continuing my rebuild series. As you saw, I did end up winning with the Atlanta Hawks in episode one of my rebuild and continuing through the A through Z format. We are going to be starting, we're going to be using the team with uh, the Boston Celtics. So um, let's just get into this. Our starting team looks like this at point guard. We have Isaiah Thomas with the backup of Marcus Smart. At shooting guard, we have Gordon Hayward, and we have a backup there of Jalen Brown. And also we have uh, Terry Rozier. At small forward, we have uh, Jay Crowder. We also have a backup of Jason Tatum. And then we have uh, Nader. At power forward, we have Morris, Baines, and Semi Ojale. And then we have Horford, Zizic, and Thice at your center position. So, that's the starting team. Now let's get into the two moves I made with this team. And yes, I only made two moves because I wanted to know, do you guys want to see me make three moves or do you want to see me make two moves or does it does it not really affect anything? Because right now the, it, the rules state that, you know, I can make up to three moves. So I could have made one more move, but I it's really hard to find a good move that works for me but it also gives a plus one win advantage to the other team. So if you don't if you don't know the rules yet, make sure to check out episode one where I rebuilt the Atlanta Hawks. Make sure to check that out before you watch this episode to really understand how the series works. So trade number one, we are gonna be sending Jay Crowder, but in return, we are getting D'Angelo Russell and Rondé Hollis Jefferson. And yes, for some reason, this gives the the boss or this gives the Brooklyn Nets a plus one wins in that Hollinger's analysis. It gives the Boston Celtics minus one wins, which I don't understand why. Because Rondé Hollis Jefferson is an amazing player. It's a great player, you know, and um he's rated really highly on this trade machine. And then D'Angelo Russell, he's not really rated that highly on the trade machine. And it's very surprising because would you rather have Jay Crowder lead your team? Or would you rather have D'Angelo Russell lead your team? Who would you rather have in a team? If there was Jay Crowder on the Nets right now, we'd be like, eh, Nets don't have a chance. But if D'Angelo Russell is on that team, which he is, we're like, oh, wait, this team might not be last in the NBA. With Jay Crowder, you're going, mm, this team's going to be last in the NBA. So I love this trade. We're getting D'Angelo Russell, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, and we're only sending Jay Crowder. It's not like we're sending Gordon Hayward or Isaiah Thomas. So I think this is an amazing trade for our team. And moving on to trade number two, this is a very surprising trade. It is very rare in this series that will happen that each team actually goes and gets plus one wins in their Hollinger's analysis. If we're gonna be sending Marcus Smart to the Rockets for Trevor Ariza, now, why is this? We have D'Angelo Russell, and then we also have Isaiah Thomas, so Marcus Smart wasn't really going to play minutes. So I decided to ship him to the Houston Rockets, or really any other NBA team. And I was looking at my trade offers, and I'm like, Trevor Ariza, that could be something we could target. And I just did Trevor Ariza, Marcus Smart, straight up, and somehow it actually went through where... The Boston Celtics actually gain a win from this, but the Rockets gain a win from this. So therefore, according to this, the rules that we have, this works. So yeah, we get that small forward um, that we really need because right now, you know, we have Jalen Brown and we have Jason Tatum. But, you know, we don't really have that starting small forward. I don't really want Brown starting. And, uh, you know, we could start Rondé Hollis Jefferson, but I really like him as a backup shooting guard on the team. So, yeah, Marcus Smart is out, Trevor Ariza is in, and here is what the revamped team actually looks like. So, the team looks like this. At point guard, Isaiah Thomas, which is obviously an incredible player. And then as a backup, we have D'Angelo Russell. So, instead of having a starting point guard as D'Angelo Russell, we actually are bringing them off the bench. And, you know, I could possibly put D'Angelo Russell at shooting guard, but and then move Hayward to small forward. But I'd rather really have 
D'Angelo Russell as, you know, playing combo minutes, you know, as a backup point guard and really a backup shooting guard at times with Rondé Hollis Jefferson. If D'Angelo Russell was playing that backup shooting guard, we could have Rondé Hollis Jefferson playing that backup small forward. So it, this team is very flexible in that sense where we can have Isaiah Thomas as a point guard, and then we have an amazing sixth man of D'Angelo Russell. And then at shooting guard, we start Gordon Hayward, because I really like the idea of having one of the best backcourts in the league of Isaiah Thomas and Gordon Hayward, which we will get to see in real life this season. And then as a backup shooting guard, as I said, Rondé Hollis Jefferson would just be incredible. And then as a third string, we have uh, Terry Rozier, which also means Terry Rozier as a third string point guard and a third string shooting guard. A small forward, we do start Trevor Ariza because of the main fact that we may end up starting Rondé Hollis Jefferson as a series, um, as like the, depending on how we do in terms of when we play the regular, the beginning Celtics team. But uh, Gordon Hayward and the backup of Rondé Hollis Jefferson, this is really an incredible backcourt. D'Angelo Russell and Rondé Hollis Jefferson by themselves wouldn't be the worst backcourt in the league. But they're, but they're a backup backcourt, so just imagine how well this backcourt is. We probably, with this backcourt, we probably have the most stacked backcourt in the NBA. And that's a very strong opinion, but I do believe that. Uh, Isaiah Thomas, D'Angelo Russell, just imagine having both those players to play point guard. That would be incredible. So Trevor Reese is small forward, and then we do have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum playing in those backup small forward roles. Brown would be the second string, Tatum's the third string, and then the player that's not going to be getting any minutes, he's the fourth string small forward, Nader. So, small forward, probably the weakest position on the team, but Trevor Ariza is not a, that weak of a player to have. You know, he did so much for the Rockets last season in the playoffs, and that's an incredible player to have, especially we're only giving away Marcus Smart, who wasn't going to play any minutes on this team. Going to power forward now, we have Marcus Morris, who in real life, I believe they traded him for Avery Bradley. Um, and then as a backup power forward, we have Aaron Baines. So that's incredible too, um, that we have Morris, we have Baines, and then our third string is Semi Ojale. So Morris, you know, we, they obviously traded for him in real life, which makes them strong at that power forward position, um, which they were never really strong at, and they obviously did lose Amir Johnson. But Morris is... In my opinion, Marcus Morris is a better player than Amir Johnson anyway. The problem with the Celtics in real life is that Isaiah Thomas is pretty bad at um, playing his, playing on the defensive end, obviously, because he's so small. And um, they also, you know, they might play Gordon Hayward at small forward in real life, meaning they don't really have a good shooting guard that's a solid defender because, obviously, when you put every Bradley in, he can do somewhat of a job of uh, locking down players like Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, you know, those types of stars. He can kind of do the job at locking down, but Isaiah Thomas cannot do the job trying to defend Kyrie Irving and Stephen Curry. But yeah, power forward, pretty, pretty heavy position in terms of the players we have, you know, Morris, Baines, and, or JLA. Morris and Baines could easily switch if Morris isn't playing that good of a series. You know, Baines can easily come into this rotation. And then at the center position, we obviously have Al Horford. I look to try and get him for, like, a very good center and a very good small forward or a very good center and a very good power forward. The problem is his contract is so large that it's really, like, if I ship Horford away, we have to get, like, two stars. You know, if I ship Horford away, Horford makes $27 million a year, which is the same as combining Draymond Green and Clay Thompson. It, right? It doesn't really, um, the contracts, it wouldn't really, really match up because why would the Warriors do a Horford for Thompson and Green? So, um, yeah, we have Horford and then backup. This is kind of why I wanted, like, a good center and maybe even a good backup center, too. Um, we have Zizic and Thice, so we're going to be looking to play Aaron Baines almost at a power forward center position. So the front court's not that good, but it's still better. Then the front court, I, be, I believe it's still, well, I, well, it's not I believe, but center, it's, it's the same as the regular team. So, um, you know, that kind of cancels each other out. So it's really the backcourt, and I believe my backcourt is stronger than the team's backcourt. So I'm looking really to win this series. So let's move on. 
uh, to the games and the series between the revamped team and the regular team. Game one, we blew the revamped team out a hundred, or we bl not we blew. We blew the regular team out, excuse me, 126 to 103. Us, the revamped team, won. Gordon Hayward was the game MVP, 33 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. And in the second half, we scored 24 more points than the regular team, which, which really made that blowout possible. We still would have, it's crazy to think we still would have done you know, just fine. I mean, if you did take away that 24 points, we will we will have lost by one point because they did have a better first half than us. But, you know, we just play incredible in that second half team. And, um, you know, maybe this, maybe we look as this is a possible second half team. Game two, we win again. But this time it goes into overtime. Horford was the game MVP. He had 18, 13, and 10 which is incredible that, and it's really, he looks to do that in real life where he's a good scoring and a good rebounding center, but he can also pass that, but he can also pass the rock. So um, it went to OT, but we outscored the regular team 21 to nine. So that means we won 127 to 115 in, in that overtime, we ended up, you know, outscoring them by that much, which, is starting to see we're a late game team. And um, it looks through the Celtics in real life because of the fact that Isaiah Thomas, obviously, uh, you probably know he led the league in most points scored in that fourth quarter. So um, obviously his nickname is King of the Fourth Quarter. So, um, you know, King of Overtime too is what this team kind of is, King of the Second Half. And um, in game three, this is where Isaiah Thomas really shined in that fourth quarter, we won 106 to 90, which takes the series 3-0. We only have to win one more game, um, and it would take a lot of blowing, like losing four games in a row to really. And that would pretty that would be pretty sad that we take the lead 3-0 and then we end up losing 4-3. But um, you know, 106 to 90 was the score. Isaiah Thomas 31 points, six assists. 12-point difference in the fourth, and that was because of Isaiah Thomas. He's, like, he scored 15 points in that fourth quarter, which which is just insane that, you know, that difference in that fourth quarter. Um, and in game four, will they come back? No, they do not. We won 94-91. Us, the revamp team, we ended up sweeping the... Uh, Regular Celtics team, we won 94-91 in this game four. So um, Isaiah Thomas again, game MVP. He had 34 points, right? And um, the third quarter was insane. 27 to 18, we we ended up taking that third quarter 27-18, which made it possible to get that comeback in the fourth. You know, we fall behind in that first uh, two quarters. But then we can really shine. We really come back in that second half. And we prove that in game four. And um, Isaiah Thomas was that game MVP. He took it home. I would like to say that we scored a game winning three pointer. And it was tied like 91 91. And then it went 94 91. But what ended up happening was like it was tied 92 91. Like we made, Isaiah Thomas had a uh, basically a winning layup because it was 90 91. And then he ended up making it 92 91. And then they missed a uh, three-pointer. Um, I believe it was Gordon Hayward who missed the three-pointer. So then we were, they just fouled us, and then we ended up taking the win, 94-91. So um, overall, though, in the series, it was a 4-0 sweep. We won 4-0. We won 4-0. Uh, the series MVP, I could give it to Thomas because he had uh, two game MVPs. Horford had one game MVP, and Hayward had one game MVP. I'm going to give the game MVP, though, to or not the game MVP, but the finals MVP, or really the series MVP. I'm going to give it to Al Horford, and here's why. In game two, he had 18, 13, and 10, but he, he went kind of unnoticed where he wasn't actually the player of the game. However, 
he could have possibly been because, like, in the fourth quarter when Isaiah Thomas had 34 points, or not in the fourth quarter, but in the in game four when he had 34 points, Al Horford still had 17 points, 13 uh, rebounds, and 7 assists. Like, every game it was either he got the triple-double or he was really close to getting that triple-double. Obviously, he did have the triple-double in game two, and then in all the other games he was... Three, four, or even two. One game, he was one uh, assist away from getting to that triple double. So um, this team really showed that we always played better than the regular team in that second half. And um, you know, it was almost like the regular team just ran out of steam in that second half. You know, we might see because they have such a lack of, um, you know, they have a lack where they have, you know, Isaiah Thomas. Marcus Smart, Gordon Hayward, Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, Jay Crowder, uh, and Tatum, and also uh, Nader, that, um, you know, point guard, they're not really running out of steam. You have Thomas and Smart. But, you know, Hayward and Brown and Rozier, you're starting to get maybe, you know, can Brown really back up Hayward as a second-year player? And then at small forward, you have Crowder and Tatum. That could be really just a struggle in real life where, um, you know, one position is going to run out of steam in real life, and teams are going to realize that that position is going to run out of steam and attack that position. And um, we ended up doing that in the third, especially fourth quarter, where players like Isaiah Thomas and um, uh, Gordon Hayward and Al Horford, that big three, started attacking those players that did that on that revamped team because we had more backups, meaning that our stars could get more rest. And then when they came back in, they would play better than... You know, Isaiah Thomas would be playing on our team, would be playing better than Isaiah Thomas on their team because he was able to get more rest because D'Angelo Russell was playing a ton of minutes, much more than Marcus Smart would be playing. And then Terry Rozier was barely getting any minutes because he obviously had to play point guard and shooting guard. That t- it was it was half the regular team was trying was almost running out of steam, but it was half that our team was playing incredible. Uh, anyway, that's going to indeed wrap it up though. We end up uh, two and zero in the series so far. We won with the Celtics, and we also won with the Atlanta Hawks. We made some incredible moves in this series. I love this series. Hopefully, if you like it, you will drop a like down below. I'm hoping to hit uh, four or five likes this uh, episode. And if you didn't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button. But let me know in the comment section why exactly you didn't like this video and how I can improve my videos. And uh, anyway, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and have an amazing day.